When I was 21, I got kicked out of a convent. <laughs> it shocked me at the time, but it was no accident. For the previous four years, I had been living in this convent, believing that this was my calling, to live a life of poverty, chastity, and obedience. But inside, I was seething. I had this unbelievable rage that I could hardly contain. And I thought that whatever I wanted most was what God wanted least for me. And whatever I wanted least, God wanted most. And so I continued in my rage until one day, my prioress, the woman in charge of the nuns, called me into her office and said, you're floating. I was in spiritual limbo. And she convinced me to leave. I was stunned. My whole life had narrowed to this point of focus where I was doing this one thing, becoming a nun. And now I had no idea what my point of focus was supposed to be. This convent was connected to a larger commune on which I had grown up and where my whole family still lived. And I moved back there and continued to suspend myself in this spiritual limbo. Meanwhile, my sister was teetering on the brink of leaving this place. She had been uh, going to community college and attending uh, courses there. And she came home talking about this guy who was pen, uh, paying a lot of, of attention to her. And then very quickly, she started talking about leaving, leaving the commune and taking a job as a nanny and getting the hell out of this place. Except I knew that this was not an informed decision. She had this kind of crazed energy coming off of her, and I recognized it. It was the same kind of rage I had lived with for four years, and much longer even before that, in that convent. And it kind of scared me to see what, how it was kind of leaking out of her in these dangerous ways. This guy who was interested in her had already gotten one girl pregnant. And she seemed fascinated by this. And all I could picture was this guy snake charming her into his bed and then leaving her pregnant and battered or something horrible. So she worked herself into such a state one night that she drove her car off the road into a ditch. There was no good reason for this to happen. And I, I thought later when she told me about this that maybe the fog from the marsh had rolled up onto the road and, and obscured her vision. But actually, this was no accident. It was a cry for help. I'm not sure her call for help was really answered, because the next day, she entered the convent, the same convent I had left the year before. And I remember the pain of that moment. I felt like she had replaced me, that I no longer had a place in the world. And I, I grieved my loss of this home, even though I had been so filled with rage there. It was still my home. And then two months later, I realized I was the one who needed to leave. I was the one who needed to take that nanny job. And so I packed my car up. and. I left for good. That was 16 years ago. And just a couple of weeks ago, I traveled back down there with my husband and my baby daughter to visit my family, who all still live there in this commune. And I was standing there underneath the shade of this red maple tree, holding my baby daughter's hand as she toddled around and talking to my sister, listening to her talk about her life in the convent. And I wondered what kind of fluke had landed me in this life with this sweet husband and this beloved child. Well, I watched my sister sit across from me, childless, unmarried, so carefully polite and so guarded. 
And I realized that later, I realized that in that moment when she had driven her car off the side of the road, it had seemed as if some kind of strange reversal had been acted on the two of us. But the courage that it took to leave that place alone, completely shunned by this commune, utterly new to the world, was a choice, not an accident. <laughs>